Hello, everyone, and welcome to the talks program of Art Fair Philippines 2021. I'm Lisa Periquet, a co-founder of the fair. We close the live events on the Art Fair Philippines 2021 website today with this talk celebrating the national artist Arturo Luz, who passed away recently at the age of 94. Not only were Mr. Luz's works installed pretty much every year in the fair, he was also himself a frequent visitor until ill health overtook him. Before we begin, just a few reminders. We will have a Q&A session at the latter part of the panel discussion. You may type in your questions using the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen, and the moderator will read out your question when appropriate. Art Fair Philippines Talks is presented together with our education partners, the Ateneo Art Gallery, Museum Foundation of the Philippines, and Art Review. It's now my pleasure to pass you on to Boots Herrera of the Ateneo Art Gallery, who will introduce today's speakers and moderate the discussion. Enjoy the talk. Thank you, Lisa, and good evening. The Ateneo Art Gallery is honored to co-present this event that celebrates the life of Arturo Luz, national artist for visual arts who passed away last May 26. He was the last among that generation of post-war modernists who helped define the trajectories of figuration and abstraction in Philippine art. Arturo Luz was a painter, printmaker, and sculptor. He was also noted for his role in, and contributions in the fields of design and art administration. In 1960, he founded the Luz Gallery, which was in operation until 2002 or 2003. Also, Luz was also the founding director of the Metropolitan Museum of Manila, the Design Center of the Philippines, and the now defunct Museum of Philippine Art. He has participated in and helped organize several exhibitions and biennales worldwide, including the Philippine Cultural Exhibition in New York in 1953, Arte de América y España in 1963, the 11th Sao Paulo Biennial in 1971, and the Tokyo International Print Biennial in 1974, and the 8th British International Print Biennale in 1984. Luz was conferred the title of National Artist for Visual Arts in 1997. Tonight, we have invited four individuals who have been among Luz's closest friends. While his achievements as an artist is renowned, renowned, our guests' personal insights will give us a deeper understanding of the master. Each of them knew Luz in different capacities, as a close family friend since youth, as a boss and mentor, as a collaborator, and as a dancing partner. So try to figure out which role matches with which guest. And so to introduce our speakers, First, we have um, Ambeto Campo, a professor of history in Ateneo de Manila University. Um, and he writes an editorial uh, page um, at the Philippine Daily Inquirer. In 2017, he curated two exhibitions to celebrate Arturo, Arturo Luz's 90th birth anniversary. First, Luz at 90 at the Ateneo Art Gallery, which featured works on paper, collages, and small, small paintings completed before the artist fell ill. And the second was a survey show titled Arturo Luz First Light for the Ayala Museum, also intended to celebrate Luz's 60, 65th year as an artist. Uh, the Ayala Museum exhibit is actually uh, available for viewing uh, in their website. Our next uh, Speaker, our guest speaker is um, Andy Loxin, who joined the LV Loxin Partners in 1990 and was appointed administrator and design consultant to the firm in 1995. He has been responsible for establishing the partnership's policies of governance and serves as an internal critic and architectural design resource. He is deeply involved in the conceptual design process of the firm's uh, defining projects. Tapped by the partnership as a presenter for the firm's more complex and important work. He is also often at the forefront of the firm's joint design efforts, which allied collaborators, design partners, and consultants. 
In 2016, Andy was co-curator of the Philippine Pavilion, uh, the country's first ever entry to the Venice Architecture Biennale, featuring the exhibit Mohon, Traces of an Adolescent City. Andy was also the founding chair of the Beacon School and is the current chair of the Beacon Academy, both international baccalaureate world schools that offer a globally recognized academic program from preschool years to the end of the secondary education. Um, he's also a member, a board member of um, the Ayala Museum and a worldwide fund for nature. But beyond thinking of design buildings, real estate, education, the environment, and the arts, Andy is also involved in community development, the lit Little League Baseball, and until the pandemic, continued to be a weekend warrior in a long-running professional blues band. Our next speaker um, is Tina Bunoan. <clears throat> she earned her architecture degree from the University of the Philippines. She is also a product designer with, comp with a comprehensive experience in architecture and interiors, furniture and furnishings, houseware, and jewelry design. While working in the Design Center of the Philippines from 1984 to 1987, with Luz Den as its director, Tina broke new grounds in the field of exhibition and product design. From 1988 to 94, uh, Tina joined Talier Natural, Centro de Diseño in Madrid, Spain, where she cultivated a style that imprinted her modernist virtues in interior and furniture design for international clients. Upon returning to the Philippines, she embarked on architectural journalism as well and created a design magazine for professionals um, that we all know now as Blueprint under Mega Magazine Publications. She was its first editor-in-chief and served um, from 1999 to 2002. Uh, Bunoan is also a member of the board of directors of the UP, Co uh, UP College of Architecture Alumni Association. Um, and uh, recently, she made her return to product and furniture design, managing the Cebu-based furniture export company, Swambi Incorporated. And consummating her entry into the design world, uh, Bunoan in recent years explored jewelry design with her cutting-edge collections and floral design for special events with Comfortscape Incorporated. And lastly, we have Malu Gamboa Lindo an entrepreneur whose career spans 30 years in the food and restaurant industry. She attributes her love for Filipino art almost entirely to Arturo Luz, which began in 1995 when she was working in, on El Circolo. Designers of the restaurant, Ramon Castell Castellanos and architect Tina Bonoan, came up with the Torero design concept. Together, they went to the School of Matadors in Madrid to purchase costumes called traje de luces, garments previously worn by matadors. They brought these garments to Mr. Luz, who made 11 beautiful collages, which to this day adorn the walls of El Circolo. So thank you, Malu, um, Tina, Andy, and um, Ambet for joining us. So um, We'll have a brief sharing from each of them, and then we'll begin a conversation after. So, Ambet, uh, can we go to the next slides first? So, um, yes. So, these are some um, photographs that were that uh, from the archives of Art Fair Philippines. So, Mr. and Mrs. Luz. Um, attending or visiting the Art Fair, as Lisa said, they were. Um, both of them were regular um, visitors, no? He loved uh, staying, sitting uh, and, and talking to people, um, friends and, and other artists. So here we see him um, chatting with the visual artist Eduardo Aldez. And then um, the next slide shows um, works on paper and uh, sculptures no, by Mr. Luz also featured at the art fair. This was in 2017. And then the next slide. Um, so this is to 
to segue to our, our first um, speaker, so Ambet Ocampo. Yeah, this was uh, taken in the art fair, uh, We I think 2017, when we uh, gave a talk on Luz. Next slide, please. Yeah, another one. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, three three slides on. Okay, um, this was the last time that uh, Mr. Luz uh, went out of the house. Uh, he visited the show I curated at the Ayala Museum for his 90th birthday. Uh, came in an ambulance, left in an ambulance, but uh, because it was a survey show, it was very nice that to see Arturo looking at works uh, from way, way back. So it's like a reunion of of a father and his children. Uh, this one is the portrait he did of uh, Fernando Sobel, one of his best friends and someone he shared um, a design um, a aesthetic with. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, here he is. So the nice thing was that we went to, I pushed him on the wheelchair and we went through every piece in the, in the survey show and he explained, you know, remember, Bird, uh, why they were why a certain piece was painted, um, and here he is this, the describing proportion and and why he he liked using black and white, you know, uh, instead of using a lot of color. Next slide, please. Uh, these were his small uh, metal sculptures. Um, Tina Bonoan will probably tell you later that uh, when he was working at the design center, he he hated the administrative work. And I think uh, aside from smoking too many cigarettes, uh, he would, uh, I think, take out his stress on the paper clips uh, in, on his desk. So he would, you know, um, wind them up. And uh, later on, he found out that these actually Actually, look uh, probably would look nice in black metal tubes, um, and this became his uh, small sculptures. Actually, for me, they looked like, you know, black calligraphic strokes on on space. Uh, in jest, he used to call these things the spaghetti series, you know, because they looked like uh, black spaghetti, uh, something that uh, his wife actually hated eating. Next slide, please. Uh, this one was one of his last works. I was surprised uh, that he he made something that looked like his uh, old work, and I remember he he's telling me, you know, I can make a, I can make a fortune, uh, forging my old works. You know? so this is uh, one of his boxes and shells works, uh, in a, a tone that he used to do. Uh, decades before us and then these are pictures from his studio so you can see in the in the background what what he would use brushes uh used uh ramen cups um this and the studio in a very big table uh covered with manila paper next slide please okay so more more pictures of the studio uh he there were sculptures there were brushes there were uh, lots of uh, sharpened pencils he was very obsessive compulsive about this and he was very proud that most of his materials came from hardware stores or national bookstore um shortly when i was living in japan he told me one day can you go can you go to some shops and buy me some Japanese brushes? You know, and I was surprised that there was a whole universe of um, different types of brushes. And um, I, I, it's not here in these slides, but I brought this and I filmed him opening the like a boy uh, opening a toy and um, looking looking at all these brushes and telling me how how heightened the Japanese aesthetic was, uh, not just in in form, but also in function. Next slide, please. Uh, we, we like to eat together and long before the pandemic, this is how he would eat. No, it was normally, well, a revised bento style. No, while this was Philippine food, uh, we would sit on a large table. He would sit, well, it was already physical distancing before the pandemic. He would sit on one end and then I would sit on the other. Uh, food was put in little containers. His, his uh, Plates were black, uh, nice modern uh, cutlery, and no sharing. No? So it's, uh, 
he, uh, many people always say, you know, he had a Mandarin sensibility, but I realized after living in Japan that uh, his sensibility was more Japanese than, than Chinese. Next slide, please. Okay, these are one of his uh, collages. Uh, very nice. What you could see is just, you know, paper. It's just cartolina, black and white, and uh, he'd put things together and make... Uh, the most stark and the most powerful uh, things on, on pieces of paper. No, next slide, please. Uh, this was the uh, sculpture show, a survey of his sculpture that I curated for the Ateneo Art Gallery. Uh, he was very happy with it. So we, we uh, over the years, talking about how he would hang paintings, etc. So. Uh, when I curated the show, I just did everything that he, I heard him do, uh, and he would say that this was his best show ever. So um, it was my first curated show, and uh, I was very happy that he was happy about it. Now, next slide, please. Okay, these are, I found this in one of his cabinets. Uh, Luz would usually make many, many uh, titles. You know? So like people would think like, you know, U, Q, uh, new, these are Japanese or Chinese sounding titles, but they're all invented. No? So he would invent things. And then this was this was quite important because in this slip of paper, he would talk about uh, how different um, different artworks, like he would do a whole series, say on paper, call it this one, and then it would turn into sculpture. Sculpture would turn into painting. Painting would turn into collages. Uh, so it it was it was like a survey of uh, not only the titles but also the progression of uh, of his work. So I, I'm glad I was able to take uh, photographs of this. He also did for me, which I'm not showing here because there are too many fake uh, Arturo Luz paintings uh, going around. He he did uh, the whole list of. Uh, um, signatures that he did from the very beginning. So you will know at what date uh, he did a certain kind of signature. So that's what I used to to match, you know, and most of the time fakers don't know this. So this is where we usually catch this. One last thing is that when I first met him, Arturo told me, well, boasted that he was the only Philippine artist who could draw a straight line. Uh, in the beginning, of course, I believed everything he said. But in his later years, uh, I would see that he would use a ruler. And I asked him, I thought you're the only artist who can draw a, a straight line. And then he, he laughed and said, you know, I, earned, I learned early in life that the best way to draw a straight line is to use a ruler. So uh, I mean, under that very almost suplados uh, uh, exterior, he was a very funny, uh, witty man. And uh, you see that in his works and you see that in his personality. Thank you. Thank you, Ambed. So, um, yeah, Andy, yes. Uh, hi. Uh... Hi everyone. Um, uh, unlike Ambet today, I guess uh, uh, I was asked to actually be the art fair folks uh, to sort of walk you a little bit to, to some, I guess, personal uh, memories. Uh, so I do not have a whole lot of slides to show you. They may be only two, um, but uh, what I do have, I guess, is a narrative from memory of, uh, of what I remember. Um, and uh, I'd like to take you a little bit uh, through that um today um in in my memory there, there really wasn't a time uh where i was not aware of uh, arturo luz um you know by the time sort of uh, i met him um he had already at that point um uh, met my dad in the 50s likely at the philippine art gallery and he already had a fast friendship with uh with uh, fernando sobel uh, and my dad were very, very close. Um, and they shared this sort of penchant for design and art and antiquities between the three of them. Um, and at, at that time, of course, um, that was a really rich soup of conversations, collaborations, cross-pollinations and friendships between artists and uh, the creatives. Uh, the, the architects were talking to artists, visual artists, who were talking to dancers, to musicians, 
to, to uh, people involved in, in writing and literature, history, archaeology. A very rich time, I think, for, for Philippine culture and the creatives. Um, something that we all wish for <laughs> could happen again. Of course, times are very different. Uh, but in the middle of that uh, intellectual and uh, creative foment, um, sort of uh, somehow I was born <laughs> in, in, in 1962. Uh, uh, and by that time, actually, um, uh, my, my dad and Arturo had already sort of a shared space. Uh, um, some people know that sort of uh, wherever the locks in offices were, the architectural offices, was also the same location as the, the Luz Gallery from 1960 onward. You know, there were three locations. Uh, um, first in the Ramona Apartments in Ermita, uh, starting in about 1960. And then through the greater part of their career on number 448 uh, EDSA uh, for the longest time. Um, and then eventually sort of uh, towards the end uh, in 2002, 2003, when the Luz Gallery closed, um, uh, it was at the Loxin building uh, on Ayala Avenue, which was also the location of uh, my dad's office uh, at the time of his passing uh, in 1994. So there wasn't a time really that I didn't know Arturo and my first impressions of him, uh, you can see sort of in that picture, uh, this was sort of a, uh, uh, in, in the pool at our house, um, dad in the forefront and there's uh, Tita Tessie uh, with Paula, her eldest child uh, and Arturo in the in the back. Uh, my first impression of Tito Arturo in my sort of thinking memory was sort of this rather elegant man with this buzz cut, sort of a spiky hair, very clean, very ayos, uh, very together, and, and you know a lovely shape to sort of his uh, his hair. Um, and knowing him, I guess over time was sort of this organic unfolding. Uh, through through my years, I was always aware that he was there and he was he was in the house so so often. Uh, we remember very very clearly sort of these birthday and pool parties with with Paula, his kids, Paula, Ella, and Luisa. Uh, later, Claudia when she when she uh, was born, and coming home every afternoon from from grade school uh, and passing by the Edsa office uh, to see if my dad was ready to go home. And of course, he was never ready. He was always in the drafting room. And uh, so we would run down and sort of play around in the loose gallery, believe it or not. Uh, how they allowed us to sort of run around that gallery with all the sort of fragile things was uh, sort of a, uh, rather remarkable. And what I remember of those years, of course, was the ever-present pack of Winstons. It was like uh, uh, smoked incessantly. Uh, and he always had sort of a soft drink ready for us and, uh, and, and coffee. He and Tita Tessi were actually incredibly generous um, uh, uncles and aunts. Um, eventually, as, as we grew up, uh, can I have the next slide, please? Um, in, in later years, um, he and uh, the Lucas spent a lot of time with us actually in Puerto Galera. And that's a picture basically of Paolo in the forefront with, with Tita Tessi and uh, Arturo. And you see him in his hand, hidden in his hand, is that pack of Winstons. Uh, in his right hand, sort of the cigarette sticking out. Uh, very familiar image uh, that sticks in our, in our minds. Uh, and others hear about his penchant for bush jackets. Uh, and, and you can see sort of what he's doing in a bush jacket at the beach. <laughs> this, I think, was a moment on his way, on their way home uh, to Manila from Puerto Galera. Um, this is what we remember of him. And eventually, uh, when I ended up at, uh, at grad school, uh, the architecture school, um, I gained this tremendous appreciation as his personality kind of unfolded and what he was all about to me um, was this tremendous appreciation for why he and and my father, while Lindy, uh, completely clicked. Uh, there were there were a shared sort of a, a approach to design and, and art and architecture. Um, between the two of them, there was a total trust and a complete faith uh, in each other's sort of taste and eye. He talked about taste a lot, uh, very old school, uh, rather, rather than a very academic approach to his art. Uh, he always talked about taste and restraint. Um, 
this, this approach of a sort of reductive distillation of the essence of form um, was something that he commonly shared with that. It was, a, 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 I think, imprinted somehow in their DNA, um, how to abstract the essence of something and, and express it uh, in their art, in their creativity, uh, capturing the essence of form and abstraction, uh, the life of the line. They used to talk about the life of the line, uh, the issues of tension and balance, uh, and this unerring proportion. Um, you know, if you closed your eyes and you didn't know who people were talking about uh, in, in those circles, you know, whether you were talking about Arturo or dad, it was somehow interchangeable. Um, uh, my, my father always said that Arturo was an architect's artist. Um, and eventually, sort of professionally, uh, in the 90s, uh, we ended up uh, having a, a discussion with Arturo about uh, the mural that he, we asked him to, to uh, execute in the lobby of Tower One. Um, a rather remarkable uh, piece that he, that he placed sort of in the mezzanine level of Tower One. And so th this sort of knowledge of him unfolded sort of organically over time. Um, I think there's a, a peculiar story and uh, how things come sort of full circle. Um, you know, in 2002, 2003, uh, it came to a point where um, Arturo and Tessi were, were uh, thinking about shutting down the Luz Gallery. Uh, they were getting a bit tired and uh, he wanted to move on to other things. And uh, not many people kind of know this, but uh, um, you know, we were so heartbroken about this idea when, when, when uh, Tito Tessi told us about this, that uh, Fernando Sobel, not the painter, but his nephew, who's now the head of, uh, uh, of Ayala, uh, Fernando and I actually approached Arturo to see if there was any way, if he might consider um, a scenario by which Fernando and I could somehow uh, continue the loose gallery and keep it alive. Um, it was sort of a, a rather painful thought for both of us. I mean, I think it's an indication of how much we cared uh, about Arturo as a person, his, his genius as an artist, uh, his aesthetic and his ethics above all. Um, but we could not for the life of us in the end come to some kind of an understanding about who the right person was or how to run that gallery. At the end of the day, we both realized that actually Arturo was a singularity uh, in his genius and his ethics. Um, and at the end of the day, we had to be very honest with ourselves that there was nobody like Arturo and continuing something that tried to be him was an impossibility. He was that kind of a singular person. And at the end of the day, sort of a genius has its time. And uh, uh, we, we, we finally sort of together with Arturo agreed that um, it was time to sort of shut it down, uh, that we couldn't do it. Um, one final story, I guess, in a way, um, and this was sort of uh, in, in around that time too, about uh, 2002, 2003, when the new Ayala Museum was opening, uh, a bunch of us were asked to, to sit on the board um, to, to help the museum sort of reform itself into a new picture. And uh, both Tito Arturo and I were on that board, uh, the initial board of advisors of the museum. And um, while the museum was trying to figure out what kind of an institution it should turn itself to after this long history uh, of, of existing, um, Arturo made a statement at one of those board meetings that was so, it stays with me to this day. Um, and I think is, is sort of emblematic of the kind of person he was. Um, he, he said uh, in sort of jumble of trying to, uh, this honest conversation about what the museum should become. Okay? He said something extremely simple and again, reductive, down to the essence, down absolutely straight down the line, taking out all the side issues. His, he put a question on the table. He said, the museum will have to ask itself what it wants to be. 
remi I'm reminded of sort of the architect Louis Kahn talking about a brick, uh, the brick asking itself what it wants to be. And the answer was the brick wanted to be an arch. And sort of that extremely simple, direct, uh, authentic kind of thinking uh, and tremendous integrity about the, the ultimately sort of the, the key question is, is what we felt, what I felt um, he was all about. And I'll always remember sort of this very warm, straightforward, simple, minimalist, uh, this tremendous love for his kids and a non-judgmental view with a really wry sense of humor uh, and wonder. Um, and his tremendous laugh at the things that were absurd, of course, uh, that, that, uh, that I'll take away uh, and remember fondly. I hope that will never be forgotten for, for those who loved him a lot. So basically that's it. Thanks for listening. Thank you, Andy. There's a lot of um, takeaway there. Um, we can, we can dis uh, we'd like to, to talk about it more later. No? So next we'll have um, Tina uh, Bonoen. Uh, good, good evening, yes. Um, I work with Mr. Luz in the design center. Uh, let me just read what design is to Mr. Luz. The objective of design is to identify human needs and then to, uh, I'm sorry, and then to fill those needs with the right products. To begin with, products must be efficient, original, and competitive. It must be well-made, safe, and durable. It should be simple to make and use. It should be easy to look at, touch, and feel. It should also provide benefits to the maker, seller, and the user. And it should lead to other systems and solutions. The question is how. Uh, this is very typical, Mr. Lewis, and it's, it's, very, it's, it's a long narrative, but this very typical of Mr. Luz because he analyzes, he thinks, and he comes up with the simplest solution. And that is how his design has always been um, based on. Can I have the next slide, please? When I was at Design Center, Mr. Luz uh, mounted exhibits the very first exhibits for Manila fame, launching Philippine products into the world. And as Andy said, he was the epitome of impeccable taste. He was um, a master and a master in proportion and in balance. And he was a master in contrast and he put things together like no other. Mr. Luce's touch was magic. And as Philip Cutler would say, Philip Cutler was one of the um, consultants we had. Mr. Luce played a major part in putting all the industries on the map and indicating to the world the amazing talents and abilities of the Philippines and our craftsmen. Next slide, please. If you will see, this is an exhibition that Mr. Luce also mounted and he mixed uh, natural products, rattan, with antiquities, with wood, with uh, very streamlined pieces, very modern. And this is very typical of Mr. Luz. And as you can see, it, it, it's just magic. It works. It's clean. And it's just the way his aesthetic is. And it's honest. That's what it is. Next slide. These are the chairs that were developed at Design Center using the lowly material known as buri, which is the Wallis Ting Ting. As you can see, the forms were very simple and he, was, he would say, he would always give attention to detail, balance, and proportion. You have to keep things clean, make your lines clear, never tentative. Think precisely what and where your design is going. So this is Mr. Luz. Next slide, please. Then he also developed, you know, capis, and these are the shapes that he developed. These were in the 80s. There were linear, linear 
clear forms and there were bulbous forms and very modern forms that up to this very day is very significant in our tapiste industry. Next slide, please. He also dabbled in jewelry, more seeking uh, craftsmanship from before, looking into the history of what uh, our artisans used to do. And he developed them, he would source beads from everywhere. Uh, even he even went to India. He used to go to India a lot using the, uh, doing his jewelry. Next slide, please. And he also did tabletop and he developed paper, handmade paper in the Philippines, all through the design center. As you can see, the forms are very simple. Um, there was really the proper attention to detail in simplicity, in balance, and in proportion. Next slide, please. And this is the, uh, some posters that were developed during the time at Design Center when Mr. Luz was design director. As you can see, the graphic design is so simple, so honest, and very powerful. And this is what Mr. Luz is saying. You just have to keep things very simple to convey your message. Next slide, please. Mr. Luz also doodled a lot to all his, to all the staff members. And um, this was during the Mabuhay Kamanong exhibit. And he would um, very fondly call everyone Manong or Mrs. or Miss when you do a very good job. And he would tell you, he would say uh, Mabuhay Kamanong. And so this was the theme of the exhibit. And it ended with the doodles that he gave um, the staff members. So this is Mr. Luz to us. I mean. He was strict, he was unrelenting when it came to his commitment to quality. And he taught that, he taught that to us in Design Center. And his aesthetic is imbibed in all of us. And we are extremely thankful for that. Thank you. Next slide, please. This was when Mr. Luz came to visit us in Madrid when I worked in Madrid for a time, as you can see, yes, yes, he really did smoke and we used to smoke together a lot. And this was when he visited us when we commissioned some paintings for a hotel that we made for the South of Spain. Next, please. This was probably, I don't know, I bet these were the uh, the doodles that uh, um, sculpture pieces from he made from his paper clips that you would see on top of his desk in Design Center. I think this was one of his retrospectives or, yeah, the myth of the museum, maybe. And this was at the Mabuhay Kamano. I was showing him, you know, Mr. Luz also got into photography. And I don't know where I got the, the courage to show him the photographs that I had in my camera. Next slide, please. Oh, this is us during uh, one of the exhibits. I, um, I got this from Valentine Lee's Facebook page. And he was quite young then, yes. Next, please. This is a dress that was designed by Georgie Lloren, inspired by the art of Mr. Luz. This was, I think, I'm not sure, 2000. Oh, I'm not 2014. 2014, yes. Okay. And he came up with this beautiful, stunning dress inspired by Mr. Luce's um, uh, cities of the past. Next slide, please. This is us with Mrs. Luce and Malu during that exhibit. Um, those were the days when, when Mr. Luce was just going out and, and hanging out with us. Unbelievable. Thank you, Mr. Luz. Malu? Yes. Thank you, Tina. Thank you. So, yes, we'll have um, Malu next. Okay. Good evening, everyone. I met Mr. Luz through Tina and Ramon Castellanos in 1995 when we were working on 
our restaurant, El Circulo. The restaurant's concept was a tapas bar in a bullring or torero setting. And I fell in love with the idea immediately. So I went to Madrid and met up with Ramon and Tina to shop for the materials and equipment for El Circulo. We bought matador hats in Plaza del Sol and our friend Iyo Pantaleon made them into um, lamps that we still use today. We bought mantones de manila in the rastros, made them into curtains. And we bought these traje de luces or matador costumes from the matador school in Madrid and brought them to Mr. Luz to make them into collages. Of course, you can imagine his face when Tina and Ramon brought these blood-stained costumes to him with leathers and, and told him that we wanted these artwork to be the highlights or the centerpiece of the restaurant. You can imagine his face and it's like, what? What do you want me to do, you know? But he, he came through and how? Look at these beautiful works. He made 11 collages for us. He hung them himself with his assistant, Tini. Um, next slide, please. Oh, then this was at the National Museum. You know, the first slide was the first time this collection was exhibited at the Vargas Museum in 2007. We exhibited them again, just in 2019 at the National Museum. So these works have been exhibited twice already. So these 11 collages, Mr. Luz and his assistant Tini hung, by, hung them one by one. And I think they, you know, they had an unspoken language with each other. They, I think they were each other's BFFs. Mr. Luz would just stand, Tini would, would hang and say, okay, babamos sa kanan, op, op, konti pa, that's it, you know, and it was perfect. Mr. Luz also chose the artwork for Tsukiji, which again, he hung himself with Tini. They were numbered prints by Toko Shinoda, a Japanese artist born in 1913, who I found out just passed away this March 2021 at the age of 107. Next slide, please. So this is El Circulo, designed by Tina Bonoan and Ramon Castellanos with collages, Torero collages by Arturo Luz. So the chance to work with a national artist, Mr. Luz in particular, is one of my life's highlights. I met him at age 27. And to say that I'm a big fan of his is an understatement and to be considered as his friend is truly a great privilege. I treasure all the times we spent together. We traveled to Cebu, to Karkar, to visit Ramon and Tina in their studio. I would visit him in Ordaneta and in Valle Verde to see his latest works. We even would go to Cat's Disco in New World Hotel and go ballroom dancing. We would have our own DIs. And after work, I would meet him. He would be early. He'd start early around seven. I would meet him around nine. And we'd just dance all night. It was just too cool to dance with Mr. Luz. Um, on Father's Day this past 2019, my brother Jay prepared a roast turkey for him. And I was so happy to get a video message sent by his daughter, Luisa. Also, when Luisa showed him the invitations to the National Museum exhibit, he remembered clearly that we did go to Madrid and we had to buy the materials and, and these were the materials that he used for the collages. You know, everything about Mr. Luz was precise. The right use of words, the straightness of his lines, his work ethic, Mr. Luz was so focused, he worked day in and day out, seven days a week. He would often start his sentences with the word, listen, and end them by saying, 
that's it. Everything was brought down to its simplest and most precise terms. Of course, Shempre, I would hang on to his every word, be it talking about his travels or his latest food discovery. I was, I'm just his biggest fan. This red burlap behind me has its own story to tell. One day I went to his house in Urdaneta with two of my prettiest and coolest friends, Kitty Jacinto and JT Season. He was actually reluctant to sell this piece as he was saying, it was so difficult to make this red. But somehow, I guess we were able to charm him that day. And so we were able to bring one home. And this is it, my most precious possession. Before he fell ill, we were actually planning his 90th birthday on November 26, 2016, which was supposed to be in Chukiji. But he got sick shortly before that. So the last time, next slide, please. Is there a picture uh, with us? The last time we partied together, this is it. it was at Ben's 50th year retrospective at the Met. And this was in October 2015. Okay. So, um, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Malu, um, Tina, Ambet, and Andy for your, for sharing your stories. Um, can we have the other speakers um, on, on uh, turn on their cameras, their videos? Okay, so, yeah. So thank you. Um, yeah, those are um, I, I, the the very personal moments that you shared with them with with Arturo Luz uh, are quite um, interesting, but also connects with how we know him, um, his public image. No, so let me just um, pose some questions. Uh, maybe we can further discuss it. Um, I, I first, but before before that, uh, I want to point out, Ambet, in the slide where you have the titles of um, his works, no, parang mga series. There's actually a group of names that are names of Spanish abstract artists, no, Torner, Rueda, um, Tapies. Tapies. So, and these are the artists that um, Zobel. Um, uh, were, were Sabel's close friends mm. and whose works are also part of the Museum of Ab Museum. Spanish Abstract yeah. Art. So it, um, there is that connection. Um, I, I, I believe Mr. Duce also knew them, no? Uh, knew yes. some of them at least. Torner yeah. and Rueda. Uh, I, I think visited Tapies, Manila, yeah. no? Mm. Oh. no Sige. Um, yeah, so... Um, one of the questions I, I, I sent you was um, your first impression of him, if you have a memory of um, when you first met him, what was it like? Because uh, I'm sure you knew uh, he already had a reputation. Uh, Tina, probably for you, he was already known um, in the design um, industry. No? So um, could any of you share um, your... Hey. How, what you remember your first encounter with him and, and how did that change if it did change okay. through the years? Um, since you did point that out, my first memory of Mr. Luce was when I entered his office at Design Center. Mm -hmm. And boy, was I shocked. It was a space that just spoke of itself. It was empty. Mm -hmm. It had just the right pieces, a desk, mm -hmm. him, maybe a few paper clips on the table. Um, he had uh, Miss Van der Rohe chairs, mm -hmm. uh, even bare walls, even bare walls and just a wooden desk, a wooden desk. And that was it. 
I said, oh my God, hindi ako sanay. <laughs> I was amazed by the space, the austerity, just the essentials. And that was Mr. Luz for me. And through the years, I mean, the aesthetic is has been the same. Consistent. Although in the later years, Ambert medyo bumigay na, no? Oh. <laughs> What do you mean by that? Mar- maraming kal- kosas, he would call them. No? So, uh, maraming kalat sa, kalat sa okay, studio. Nah, okay. yeah. Yeah. But well, that's why he had ni- well, he bought those Ikea cabinets so he could, could hide all, no, hide some of the things. No? Uh, <laughs> but later, wala na. Actually, it's one of the one of the things I remember was he came to my, my house once and uh, he was looking at a wall of... Uh, of Bulul's and he says, you know, I want to go up to Baguio and ask Ben Cab um, to, I want to get, you know, a, bu- a Bulul or a, or a pair of Bulul's, but, you know, I'm, 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 I'm embarrassed to ask Ben for some. And then, so he's looking at my shelf and then he says, which do you think is the best pair here? Then I pointed uh, one out. This is the best one. Then he asked why I explained. And then he pointed to another. He says, no, for me, this is the best one. And then so I said, I, you can have it now if you want. Are you sure? So I, because yes, yes, I just, you know, if you really want them, then take them, take them home. So he took them. And then when I visited him again, I saw the, the balloons on his uh, coffee table. So there's a mm-hmm. small torner sculpture and then that. And when I looked at it, I said, para yatang nagsisi ako. Ang ganda-ganda pala dito. <laughs> and then he smiled and he says, Kasi doon sa bahay mo, masyadong maraming gamit. Dito, mm. ito lang ang makikita Uh-oh. mo. So, you know, it, you, you focus and you actually yeah. see uh, things that you don't really see. So, I mean, for me, it was that, that aesthetic of restraint, uh, mm-hmm. austerity, um, the simplicity. He was telling me the design center. He, he, he showed me uh, the, the ivory plaque of a koto. And he says, you know, I, I would put this on a table and everyone who was new in the design center, I'd sit them down and just look at this perfect thing, you know. Uh, Did he do sit, that to me? Yeah. Oh, oh, well, that's what he said. That's what he said. <laughs> sit down and look at it. <laughs> oh, my God. Mm-hmm. That, that, yes, Andy. That's really true about, uh, yeah, and I remember these conversations also with my you are kindred spirits in that way. In other words, sort of the understanding that, that it's when you isolate sort of form in its purest sort of version, mm-hmm. you begin to understand actually what the thing is all about. If it's in the middle of Kala, uh, you, you lose it. You, you yeah. completely lose the essence of what it is. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and it, it, it really does follow as personalities uh, both him and, and, and my dad were about sort of take the lead, sort of uh, ultimately sort of what you have to say or what you create becomes more powerful, you know. Very true. Right? Very true. Uh, you, you, you distill, it's sort of like almost like a Zen painter, right? Capturing the lee of something, the lee of a uh, You wait, you don't put a line down. And then all in, in one motion, sort of in this empty space, you create yeah. a gesture and you capture yeah. the uh, sort of translation of the art and the architecture. It's kind of why they kind of, I don't know, somehow they, gel. They, gel, yeah. Yeah. They, they, were, they were of the same, of the same so mind. True. So true. Or even his collage. Just that uh, he would put together, he would call them the the pizza pie series, diba? So uh, cut pieces of paper, and then he'd have an empty thing, and then he would throw this around, and uh, you know, it's almost instinctive, diba? How, what thing will will go with each other, and uh, and then he would know again instinctively if something was good or not. There. There are many things out, Deva. I mean, he was amazing. That was the amazing part. His composition, the balance, amazing. Amazing. Idol. Yeah. Um, Malu, would you like to share your, if you remember your first? um, It was in Circulo. Encounter. Yeah. And, um, you know, we, plate was still a mess, dust everywhere. 
and we were about, about to open. It was a hanging day. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine? He just shows up with a truck with all of these works, 11 collages, just no staff. I mean, just Tini and him and, and said, okay, let's bring them down. And he knew exactly where to put each piece. You know, each, each piece has a number in the back and he knew where to place them. And it, I, I just, you know, I was with a rock star, with a god. And because of that, you know, um, I've fallen in love with Filipino art and artists. It's, it's like my greatest happiness is being with them, you know. It's such a, they're, they're just so cool. They love what they do. They, they're so happy to share their work. And just being with them is really my happiest time. And I, it was Mr. Luz who started my love for Filipino art and artists, really. And you know, um, my very first money earned from Circulo, um, I was able to, I decided on buying um, a painting by Mr. Luz because he would always tell us, make us cuento about his trips and uh, ab- about the temples and the imaginary landscape. So Mr. Calma had a gallery a block away on Benavides. Mm-hmm. And he had an exhibit, I think, around 1997. And so I remember it cost 275,000 pesos. It was a red imaginary landscape. And that was my first money from, from Circulo. And, I, you know, it's, that's, the rest is history. So now I'm a super fan of Filipino art. And you've been um, supporting them, no? You, you, through ACC, yes, through ACC, and, and through other um, and Tanghalan, different, Filipino. yes, yeah. it's true. Um, yeah, Andy, um, I, do you remember um, any? Obviously, your dad and and Mr. Luce were very close collaborators. Um, do, you, do you remember any stories with how um, the CCP project? Um, ano to, parang, um, the evolved because uh, I, I, rem- I remember there were I think it was Mr. Chabet who told me that the loose mural actually took at the little theater lobby took very uh, it, it was produced for a very short period it's a very quick execution of Mr. by Mr. Luce so um, any stories about um, that particular project I don't recall um, exactly that specific thing. No? Yeah, of course, you were very young. I, I was a, the, the goofy I thing. I was reminded by by um, uh, looking at that uh, portrait of uh, of Saul Bell that you showed. Mm-hmm. That Arturo did. You know, um, the oddball thing was uh, my dad was Paulas Paulas Nino. Right. And um, and uh, Fernando was well, Fernando Sobel was my Nino, right? okay. but of course nobody could be Sobel's kids Nino because he didn't have kids. And somehow I keep on thinking of of, of the Sobel portrait as somehow Arturo being Sobel's Nino, <laughs> you know, <laughs> of sort of painting that portrait and somehow sort of uh, giving birth to something. <laughs> but 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 the discussion between those 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 three. Mm. Um, was so close in terms of a sort of a collaborative things, and and uh, you know with regards to the CCP or or the buildings that say my dad did for Ayala, in which Arturo was involved, or the CCP where 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 things were commissioned, so many of these things were done lickety split. Um, there were sort of a uh, shall we say. Um, they were not pieces that seemed to be sort of thought about and pondered time over time. They were they were almost like a, a reactions mm-hmm. to the spaces that were given, right? And they were instinctive. Yeah. They were not academic. Uh, that generation somehow, um, I mean, th- I think what you see creatively were sort of a, sort of a bursts of, of inspiration. There there were. There were genuine sort of uh, reactions mm-hmm. uh, 
uh, out of uh, out of what was in there uh, in the same way, as opposed to sort of some things that, that were, were overly studied and overly mannered. They were sort of the most direct expressions of what was in those people as creatives. Yeah. Um, doesn't surprise me that that mural uh, in, the, in, the, in the basement, in the, uh, the lobby of the little theater uh, would have been executed really, really quickly. That mm -hmm. graphic sort of style. Mm -hmm. um, I know that uh, a, a, a small version of that uh, is in the lobby actually of our offices. Yeah. Right uh, of uh, Luxin architecture offices, a, a sort of a, a little piece of it somehow, uh, a graphic that he painted right on the plywood, uh, straight straight ahead, and done extremely quickly, mm -hmm. extremely quickly, and you know, probably uh, the result of a few studies on paper, very quick sketches, and then onto the onto the onto the surface immediately. It's a, a sort of direct and very quick reaction. Uh, to it. We seem to have a, almost a divining rod, kind of <laughs> knowing what to do. Tina's completely right about sort of a, a sort of a direct and simple approach, uh, asking what has to be done, what's the program, here's the solution. It's the straightest possible, shortest possible line from beginning to end. Yeah, thanks. Um, I remember one of the uh, a common image of the PICC interior is um, the the loose sculpture at the um, landing. So as you go up, wow. yeah. parang it's a very dramatic um, element, very no? But it's very simple. So that I, I I get your point, no? How your dad and and Mr. Loose sort of. Um, at a click in, in a sense how they knew what to put in at the right place. Mm -hmm. no? um, yeah, um, let me go through some, there have been some questions already being posted. So um, I guess since we were talking about the ICCCCP um, and this may not also just relate to, um, well, uh, Mr. Luz, no? so how did, uh, Leonardo Aguinaldo, who's an artist based in, in Baguio, how did you feel about being associated with the Marcoses, for Luz, Luz being associated with the Marcoses? Um, yeah, I think, well, maybe Tina, um, the fact, uh, well, being part of Design Center, um, would you like to sorry, say something I, I, about that? Could you, um, could you speak louder? Oh, sorry. sorry. How did yes. you feel about uh, being associated with the Marcoses? Because Luz was, uh, Mr. Luz was very much part of um, the cultural uh, programs that that, the, right. that were um, However, implemented and, and started. No? Okay. At the Luz, uh, right. By the time I joined the Marcoses, period. The Marcoses but Mr. Luz was so, he was not politically. Eh? Yeah. He just did mm -hmm. his job. Mm -mm. He, he, nothing at all. You could not feel that there was any influence. Basta he'll do his job. Whether it's uh, Mrs. Marcos or whoever it is, or if it's it was then the Department of Trade was RBO, he would still mm -hmm. do his job and that's it. If he would not sway left or right or any, he would just do his job. And do it well. And that's how I felt. Mm -hmm. And that's how we all felt in, mm -hmm. I believe in the Science Center. <clears throat> Ambet, would you, would you like to say something or respond to this question? Oh, well, we, well, the politics was out of, I'd like to think that uh, Arturo was deodorant for the Marcoses. Um, and uh, when he was concurrent, I mean, he was running the loose gallery, then mm -hmm. he was concurrently director of the MET, the MOPA, MOPA. the design, design center, center. Um, which shows you um, that he was able to to manage all three, uh, you know, concurrently uh, in in the age when there was no profes professionalization or mm -hmm. curatorship or uh, museum directors. I mean, this was all Oido, as as he would say, you know. And uh, he he trained a whole generation of curators, of curators. and uh, and cultural managers in mm -hmm. these three. Um, these three institutions. He set, so. Yeah, he set a standard so high mm -hmm. based on what, 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 how he is. 
that um, he was just admired and respected by everyone. Mm -mm. Well, thank you for that. Um, Monette Vitor, um, wait, let me just look for the other questions. Parang may nawalang question. No? Red seemed to be a distinct signature color. Any reason why this particular color was what he favored? Would you say red is um, a color that he he favored? Um, well, it was a strong a color. Right? Yeah, mm -hmm. Normally, it's black and Mm. black and white black, which white, aren't gray. really mm. which aren't really colors no? so um i think if you if uh i mean just a, just an attempt to that uh, you know uh -huh. if, uh, again drawing the the parallel to, to uh some of my father's work that i think that was kind of a shared palette uh mm. this the sort of earth tones right yeah the, this idea of uh rusts and sort of this, mm. uh, yeah Colors, uh, the red behind Malu, um, black, grays. Um, they were all materials and sort of palettes that somehow came out of the earth in some mm -hmm. way. Um, very rare would you find sort of a you know, sky blue or whatever. Mm -hmm. there, there were sort of these earthly, uh, earthly things. And uh -huh. even the archi architecture side of things and on the art side of things, it somehow. Um, I don't know. Somehow it was a uh, the place of the time of the of the location. Um, yeah, actually, earth colors, but he he hated green. Mm. <laughs> and we show him anything green. I hate green. Why did you see But diba nung nung bumigay nga rin, even in the end, that he would have uh, pink, pink, yellow. Um, oh, meron siyang a few works I've few, seen yeah. with pink, yellow. Yeah, but Pero yung yellow ochre, no? Ochre. Yeah, ochre. Yeah, very yellow strong, ochre, yeah. ano. Yeah, which, uh, Andy, as I remember, when we worked with you for your dad's retrospective at CCP, there was a particular rust color that, that we used, no? And, and that was one of, um, that was what he favored also. Okay, uh, I think that question also answers the second question from Leonardo Aguinaldo about the colors. Um, okay. Mm. Ah, so, I bet you already ano pala, replied to... Um, to some. Yeah. To some of them, okay. So, Dominic Galicia, um, one thing remarkable about Arturo Luz is that aside from being an architect's artist, as Andy quoted his father, is that Luz was also an architect's brother. <laughs> yes, that's right. You forget yeah, that. That's true. His brother, that's Alfredo true. Luz, was like Lindy Loxin, also a master of reductive distillation. It astonishes one to think that there, were, there was such a time of creative ferment in which our country produced work of such elegant Amazing. and profi profound yeah. distillation. So the question is, aside from Leandro Loxin, did Arturo Luz also collaborate with other architects? With his brother Alfredo, for example. Actually, sure. Bill Luce answered if you go uh, ah, below. Yeah. Ah, okay, yeah. there, there. I'll say. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Yes. So, yes. Um, thank you, Mr. Um, Mr. Luce, Bill. Um, so, your, I, I know only one project where to the work with, with Alfredo. They designed the World Health Organization. Yeah. That's the building that's, that has a Carabao head, no? Is that the one? I say it's like a spaceship. Oh, oh, tapos there's a head of a carabao, mm -hmm. I think. Uh, no. There was also a residence that Mr. Luz worked with um, Alfredo Luz. Mm -hmm. He did the floor in the mm -hmm. rumpus room. Yeah. Mm -hmm. or, the U, or the UP chapel, di ba? Uh, the UP did, chapel. He, he did yeah. the floor, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he did the floor. So I guess, ah. and the, the UP chapel was the first collaboration, was it? It was probably no? one of the first collaborations. Because that was your dad's first project right if first, I remember. First major yeah yeah there were residences and there were things mm -hmm. mm, right right and, yeah i think the root to some degree was sort of uh uh was the philippine art gallery yes right? sort of mm. where they met and and mm -hmm. kind of sort of uh gelled in terms of thinking and that and that, that exchange of aesthetic and approach you know mm -hmm. yeah the, the the up chapel was was the first and there were four of them in fact five uh, Abueva. Abueva, Luz, Abueva. Uh, Manansala. Manansala, and Ang Kyukok. 
he's, he's the one who's, mm, he's the one who's forgotten but that, that's why i added him mm -hmm. i mm -hmm. i saw a photograph of ang kyukok actually assisting manansala oh, so, uh, so, so there are five yes. national artists there yeah yeah don't forget um but your dad was in that too i know yeah huh? The, uh, oh, the engineer. The engineer. Yeah, from the engineer. Oh. In the, uh, he was uh, working with Nino and uh, yeah, the UP, the UP College of Engineering. The UP. So, yeah. Galing. Talk about sort of magnino Nino. Oh yeah. My dad was the cord sponsor at Ambet's dad wedding. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, Yun pala ang mga parang connection. it was such a small Yan world, di ba? Oh, oh. Ties. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, your uh, he Arturo would tell me how your your dad would say, "I'm doing this building," and uh, just leave it up to him. You know, um, he would look at the building, then he would go, "This is what I want to do," and uh, it was full trust. You know, uh, they didn't full even trust, discuss respect. it. Yeah, amazing. Without any prescription, and uh, yeah, that was also true for the Ayala buildings that that uh, that my dad mm. ended up doing for. for for the Ayaras with Fernando, etc., and beyond. Uh, some of the art, the Makati Stock Exchange, etc., etc. Yeah. That was all sort of a, Arturo, have a look at this space. Bahala ka na. Complete, mm. complete trust. Complete trust. Yeah. yeah. And taste. They, they, they used to talk about taste a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. So so old school, right? <laughs> so old school, but it's so spot on. Do we do we talk about taste nowadays? No, we don't. It's a bad word these days, right? It's yeah. a bad word. Uh, uh, yeah. Dynamic circles, uh, the, the issue of uh, you know subjectivity or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But back then, completely, it was all about that. So sort of. Ay, ay, ay. But, um, <laughs> what exactly yeah. do they mean by taste then? When you talk about, Sigura, just to for 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 the, the audience, no, for the attendees. Too. Either you have it or you, they... or you don't. You don't, yeah. Okay. So, I think so it's really... understanding <laughs> what is appropriate. Mm. An understanding of something, mm -hmm. you know, what goes with what. Okay. And actually having the sensibility of knowing when to stop. Mm. This is sort of really hard. The work to... of a genius, yeah. Very hard. It's knowing to... when to stop. Uh, you know, in, yeah. in our own offices today, we talk about, we still talk about that stuff. Uh, Today, you can build and design anything on a computer, on a, everything. You have the entire palette and all the options, right? Mm. The question is, where do you cross the line? Mm -hmm. yeah. I agree. When, when do you know? I agree. You, you, you talk about, Tina, a little bit about that skill, right? The last that's word, it. that's it. That's yeah. it. He knows, that, yeah. That is knowing when to stop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just like what um, he he wrote, no, dun sa what he read earlier, Tina, yung, yung concept approach sa sa design. Um, Ay talaga si Mr. Beast. Okay, let me just to everyone in the panel from Monet Vitor, um, thank you so much for giving us this intimate look at the life of Arturo Luis. Wonderful tribute. Um, so. From Raya Alexis Gallardo, um, thank you so much. I'm an undergraduate land of landscape student, um, student of landscape architecture, and I'm currently working on my project, which I've decided to offer as a tribute to Arturo Luis. Do you know any anecdotes of his collaborations with landscape architect mm. I.P. Santos? Yes, because they are again same generation. There's a there's a you know. Uh, I guess late 70s. Mm -hmm. um, where I don't know if you, you will remember uh, the Philippine Plaza Hotel. Mm, yeah. Yes, of course. It was one of those things. Uh, I think my dad did the architecture, IP mm -hmm. did the landscape, mm -hmm. did the incredible sculpture. Yeah. Yes. Where is that? Where is it? It's now? in a house in Alabang. Okay. Believe it or not. You know, <laughs> yeah. the story of. Parang that, alam ko yan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nung pumasok yung mga bago to, to, to redo the thing. Mm -hmm. They chucked that sculpture out. Threw yes. it in the yeah. back, yeah. Yeah. The yeah. Back, they in, left it there in CCP the grounds. Mark. No, no, sa, yeah. sa likod it, ng hotel. Yeah. No? Somewhere. Yeah, in the grounds of the, oh. yeah. Yeah, somebody had to come and the uh, mm -hmm. people that we know Salvage. came and salvaged it. And the bought, bought it as scrap. Diba? So, I mean, it's uh, legally acquired. Diba? <laughs> um, and then uh, reconstructed in a house in mm -hmm. Alabang. Diba? But that, that was a collaborative project to some mm -hmm. degree. 
uh, here's the building shell. Mm -hmm. here's the right. What's it, what's the approach? And and uh, if you recall, Ambet sort of yeah. the whole. water water yeah, element. Water may, element. Uh, may water yeah. element, you know. mm -hmm. element the, the, almost like a, a mini forest in that. Yeah, area. inside. Mm -hmm. And within that was this amazing sculpture, right? Sculpture. Yeah. Uh, the idea was sort of some kind of a uh, uh, a seamless thing about inside. Yeah. Inside what? out, yeah. Mm -hmm. out, you know, blurring the edge of what was landscape, what's exterior, what's interior, mm -hmm. and then Arturo sets this incredible, iconic thing. Uh, and they were all horrified when the hotel put up those ugly, uh, <laughs> the tile the, the because people would fall into the pond, and uh, they had this ugly railing, and uh, mm. your dad and Arturo were horrified, that, you know, this, but I mean, for safety reasons, no, uh, madedemanda sila, no, but uh, I mean, it was that. Public you, safety ang issue. Public safety, but it was that, but the, this seamless thing of uh, space, you know, uh, mm -mm. one space leading to another. Yeah. Uh, I guess Raya's uh, question also brings in IP Santos into this um, generation of collaborators because he was part of the development of the CCP complex, you know, not just the, the hotel. Um, I remember he was part of that group of, of creatives that, that, was, um, that were responsible for, for designing the, um, what was, how, how the CCP complex was envisioned. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, very much, mm -mm. very much. Um, you know, the uh, in in those years there was a uh, an inspiration for many who, who was sort of a a father of modern landscape yeah. architecture. It was a Borle Marx, mm -hmm. right? A guy who was working in South America and all of that. And, and IP was was almost a disciple, mm -hmm. uh, looking at that kind of a landscape of tropical architecture. Mm -mm. Uh, to set off man-made structures and how mm. those things fit together, right? And again, you know, not academic, not not traditionally academic in the way we think of things now. Yeah. Uh, very intuitive, very sort of uh, reactionary, uh, very authentic. Because mm -hmm. it's not filtered. Oh. Yeah. Uh, it's so powerful because it's that, that kind of a thing. Okay, uh, a comment from Tina Cosculuela, who's the niece of Arturo. Um, Andy Luxin some, said something that truly captured Ito Arturo's persona, intuitive again, and not academic. Mm. So yes, thank you. Ito de Guzman, um, thanks for sharing your stories on Mr. Luz. Um, will there be future exhibits for his unreleased works? I'm curious and interested to see his photography, as, as Tina mentioned earlier. That he was also wow. fond of photography. Um, I'm bet is there is there like um well the last photography thing he did was for Isa uh, Lorenzo, mm, Lorenzo. Uh, which uh, and you know like he would take he, he was very proud of that that um, you know Jaime Sobel would take pictures had elaborate studio and uh, <laughs> Arturo just had a table and an open bulb which he would correct, play around. Correct, but, uh, he would dangle. He would dangle it, the, but correct, but it's correct, so amazing, correct, correct. you know, when I would look at those uh, still lives, those boxes lives. and shells, you know what it reminds me of? Surbaran. Mm. Uh, ah, still, still lives. Surbaran. Diba? Oh. Diba? Very spare. Pwede, pwede, pwede. Oh, pwede. Ganyan yung ano, diba? Uh, pwede, pwede. Isa Lorenzo was asking about yeah, Arturo Luz as a gallerist, which I think mm. is... Um, there, there was a group, unfortunately, there was a group in Hong Kong that wanted to do documentation because mm -hmm. when you look at the, the exhibits of the Luce Gallery, especially in the 60s, I mean, he was like Amazing. a one-man cultural center. I mean, he would exhibit, you know, artists from Japanese artists, Chinese artists, uh, and many of, oh, many of whom are, are sikat now, diba? Uh, so when, when you think about it, he had Which that is... kind of... Uh, uh, an eye for things, an eye for organizing things. Uh, it's it's sad because uh, Fernando Sobel actually gave me funding to to do the documentation for the Luz Gallery, and I would tell Arturo, 
just allow me and Ani Sartu to go through the filing cabinet. We won't take anything. We'll scan everything. And I, well, it's all basura. It's uh, so, well, I hope if things are still there and haven't been eaten by Anai, uh, we'll, ask, charm? We'll, we'll ask Luisa to to open Hindi that. Charm? I, no, I knew exactly where it was. No, he would say, wala yan. So go, no, I know where it is. Just say yes and I, I can do it tomorrow. Hindi, wala, wala. So Ay, he, wasn't, he wasn't very uh, keen on it, but... Um, Sayang, because uh, going, yes, going back to that, uh, going back to that, that thing about the uh, little story I told you guys about. Yeah, the gallery. The gallery, you know, Fernando and I were were, were dying, mm -mm. A thousand deaths at the idea of the, the loose gallery evaporating. Right. The irony wasn't lost on us that it was a Fernando and Eliandro trying to trying to get. The, you know, make sure that somehow the loose thing just somehow uh, it stays the legacy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but but in the end, I mean, when you when you when you somehow sort of analyze it, even the choice of who to of exhibit, artists, who to exhibit yeah. yeah, was 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 so Arturo. It was his yeah. eye. It was his sensibility. Yeah. It was sort of you know who was doing stuff that had this integrity. Who, who didn't sell out? Who you know, parang this yeah. whole, and, and and you know, Fernando and I kind of looked at ourselves, each other, and said, oh, if if we did this thing. Who's gonna make that call, right? Yeah. Only one guy can make that call. Yeah. No, nobody on earth, nobody yeah. in this country can do that. True. I mean that Liba, that taste actually shaped a whole generation who he exhibited and then it was a bit controversial because people felt left out and uh -oh. you know why is why is Arturo loose and Arturo was simply these are the artists I like these I are like. the artists I why will I exhibit I something it, yeah. I don't like mm -mm. so mm -mm. go somewhere else you know but I mean the loose gallery was the loose gallery you know yeah. if you didn't exhibit there you much but uh that was the thing so uh it was all him so I mean uh, how can you open the gallery if he's not if he's not there anymore? No? So, 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 so anti hype. I, yeah. I think there was a takeaway uh, of him as a person and an artist and a Quan was that he was so almost. Uh, I, I don't know if this is the right word. Some people might be offended, but there was almost like a um, an allergy to hype. Mm. First and foremost, <laughs> anything that had to happen had to have integrity, Muna. Yeah. Right? Oh, man. Yes. Like Not all this stuff that's uh, that surrounds, you know, what art what, today. What? Yeah. No, actually, I don't think he would have survived the art and auction market today. No, uh, he would be horrified by by it. No, but um, well. But he witnessed part of it. No. Um, I guess he was not yes. active. I don't know. I, mean, I, I would tell him, Mr. Luz, mm -hmm. ito, ganyan, no? it's One sold like I this. Call, I called him from uh, Leon Gallery. We're having our Asian Cultural Council auction. Mm -hmm. And his work was going into the millions. So I got, I called him. And I said, Mr. Luz, grabe. Ang taas na. Sabi niya, hindi naman, hindi na akin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I said, wow, galing. It was really going, can you hear it, Mr. Luz? It's going higher. Pa. Mm -hmm. So that was a cool moment, too. Maybe 2019. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. Luz, Arturo was very, I mean, even in the pricing, right? yeah, he was it was always by square uh -oh. foot. Right? You, square he, foot. Would, he had that with the calculator. He yeah. did, you know, and I mean, that was, it was very. You know, very sane, very, very detached very in a way. They were very rational in in his in his in his way. You know, so that that wouldn't work today. Uh, that's uh, that's the thing. <laughs> I think that the question of Isa um, is actually an important topic that that needs to be pursued. You because know? I I remember talking to um, artists like the generation of Laulian and Ben. Hmm. Um, Na niya na he, when when he um, he was um, told by Mr. Luz that he can mount his exhibit there, mm. parang he won the 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 jackpot. lottery. That was yeah. really yeah. a big thing for mm. for artists. No? So it was um, a space that artists aimed for, no? 
Yeah, according uh, to according but, to Lau, uh, mm, Mr. Luz diba? helped him a lot. Yes. Yeah. Helped him a whole lot. Mm -hmm. yes. And I'm not sure if Ben Tab also ben held Cub, his yeah. first exhibit yeah. there, no? Sa, mm. sa Luz Gallery. Marami siyang natulungan. Mm -mm. Yeah. Mm -mm. Pero yun ang strange sa kanya. He didn't collect art. I mean, he collected shells. He had. Uh, no, no, no. He had. Wala, wala masyado. He, because he, he would say, you know, it's unethical to... I mean, the only he, thing he had I was a sobel. I don't know sobel. if he collected, no. Was I don't sobel. know if he collected, but, but he had a lot. What? He had a lot. A he whole had, lot. Because people gave him stuff. Gave him stuff. Because, but yes, he, yes. Because people... But he didn't... But he but kept he did, them. He didn't yeah. get from, like, say, the best piece from... That's what he was saying, the uh, other galleries will get the best pieces from a show. So, wala, uh, what he had were things that were given to him, but were he, given to him. That's he wasn't true. really, you know, actively collecting. collecting. Kasi parang you would be competing with your. Uh, it wasn't kosher for to mm. him. No? Uh, Ethical. Mm -mm. I, I mean, you, very ano pa siya. Once I, I was so horrified. Very early on, he showed me an early Sobel, and he wanted to show me how, in his early work, uh, Fernando was not able to prime his canvases properly. So he got the painting, and then he tapped it on the floor, and then I could see the pigment falling, di ba? And then tingnan mo, oh, hindi marunong mag ano. <laughs> and I wanted to say, akin na lang, akin na lang. <laughs> And uh, oh, no. it, you know, half of it disintegrated in front of me. You know, um, wow. but, uh, that was him. That was him. He was very. He also gave gave a lot of people stuff. He gave he gave my parents things. Yeah, that was incredibly an incredibly generous uh, generation. And the same mm -hmm. with Fernando. Same thing with Fernando. They gave each other stuff. You know? No, it's one of those things. Uh, Silvana Diaz um, sharing that when uh, in the this would be I think in the nineties, no, uh, the NCCA Gallery Committee um, produced art fi artist films, no, and one of them was on Mr. Luz. Yeah, I remember that. Uh, maybe that's that's something that could be screened, no, uh, one of these days, Silvana, if you can have access to to the. The video. They, uh, NCCA has the CD. It, it was CD. produced by Black, black Soup. Soup no? So uh -huh. it's just te, you know Tessie and Arturo in black mm -hmm. being interviewed. No, um, yeah, I remember that. And Very then they're stark. contradicting each other. Diba? That was that was the funny mm -hmm. part. Okay. Um, another well, it's a comment uh, from Josephine Cruz. Um, proud to have received a positive note from Luz about the project I wrote about when I was starting at the Science Center. So his note to me uh, said, almost perfect, there is nothing to correct. Um, so have, siguro getting that um, comment, no, na almost perfect, that's already, already a big thing coming yeah. from, from Mr. Luz. Okay. Um, yeah, let me just go through some. Okay, did Arturo Luz collect Santos as well? He did. Yes, so, he did. Yep. Yeah. So he, um, he collected folk folk ones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That that was actually also again commonality with the uh, Sobel with, and mm. and Luxino. and your parents and your uh, dad mm -hmm. and your dad. Yeah, we were obsessed with with uh, you know uh, the, the antiquities and especially the sort of the archaic forms. Santos, especially. Yes. Um, Andy, I remember um, going through the archives of Ateneo Art Gallery. We actually have the list of um, grading sheets by uh, from Mr. Zobel, from Fernando Zobel, and your mm. parents attended some of his. Um, like um classes in, uh, the in art Philippine lectures art, yeah art lectures mm -hmm. grade da may grade yon ka -class, uh, classmate nila si Alice Cosette <laughs> um Eric Torres uh probably mga estudyante ah yeah, yeah mm -hmm. so yun yung generation ng ano and this would be uh, 1955 50s yeah oh 1950 so the PAG was still around no was still very much um parang in in um in operation and I, I remember, um, I, I'm not sure if this is 
correct. I read somewhere that the re one reason why Mr. Luz opened um, the Luz Gallery was um, parang in answer to how the Philippine Art Gallery towards the end was was not being managed it was well. Run. It was what yeah. he, uh, because he well. felt that artists needed um, a gallery that was professionally managed. So, hmm. um, yeah, let me thank you for the platform. Form. Uh, okay, is it possible that Luz also somehow was able to influence Lowley and Ben's art making? Um, that I, I think, um, parang, kasi I wrote also about Lau and Luz, no? Um, I think Lau already was in that direction, perhaps um, for some series, no? So, okay. Who were the other artists that were regularly shown by the Luz Gallery? Yeah. Um, I know Ofi Helvison Teki. Diba, nag, ano siya? Nag-exhibit siya doon? Hmm. I, we remember, I remember... Ofi, Ben Cab. So, uh, yeah. Raul Isidro. Oh, yeah. Raul Isidro. Mm -hmm. Raul Isidro, a few, yeah. Sino pa? Ambet. That's why I want to get my hands so I, on yes, that. That's I mean, just actually. the exhibition. Because the nice thing is Arturo actually wrote all the press releases. He wrote mm -hmm. the the artist profiles. Mm -hmm. No, so even that, I said that's a whole that's a whole book in itself. Mm -hmm. You know, just you know the way that he wrote about uh, and described the art of of the people he ex featured. Exhibited, you know? so, um, in relation I to hope it's still there. No? I'll oh. talk. So Museum of Philippine Art, I remember, um, I think it was Mr. Luz who designed that parang template for artists' um, uh, profiles, which are still valuable materials in, in the archives now with the CCP. No? So yung sense ng ano, pag, pag organize ng, ng information in the context of a museum, no? uh, I think that that's something that um, he also um, introduced no? in the Museum of Philippine Art, especially the early, the early, um, the, the early uh, years, no. Because I remember, I think some of the curators who worked there uh, include uh, Petty Benitez, tama no, uh, Ambet. Betty Benitez. Um, I think Ambet naghang ka ba? Naghang yata si Ambet. Uh, Petty Benitez, Dita, Samson, uh, among others. No? Dita is now with, with um, Ayala Museum. Okay, so maybe we should um, wrap up. Uh, well, with um, some of you already touched on this question. Um, personal attributes you would consider to be distinctly Arturo Luz. Are there anything, is there anything you wish to, to add? Like, um, Andy, I, I love how you described him with his cigarette in one cigarette. hand and the, the, the pack on the other. Um, and um, recalling all his self-portraits um, from including one, a very early one that I saw in a private uh, collector's house. Um, iisa yung, yung, yung template din, yung ano niya, yung appearance niya, very abstract and discreet. Ang lame niya. Oo. Nag-iiba lang siguro sa age, pero hindi eh. And, uh, siya pa rin eh. Would there Still be any mysterious. other qualities? Um, I guess by now, the, the attendees uh, have figured out figured out who the dancing partner is. So that's Malu. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, it wasn't Andy <laughs> or Ambed. But Tina, you also danced with, with ano? went out dancing. I know. Pero sabi niya, mabigat daw ako, pinapalo ako. Ah, okay. So <laughs> Malu, marunong. that's a compliment, no? no? The fact that he would always go with you for, for ballroom dancing. But he had his own dance instructor, uh -oh. huh? Yeah, he was I very know, pero... curious about it, mm -hmm. But he would tell me, when you bring extra clothes, you're gonna sweat a lot. <laughs> Good enough. May change form pa kami. Mm -hmm. He really enjoyed. Hour, change shirt. You know? Enjoy siya. Enjoy siya. He was serious about it. 
That's great. Um, is there anything in the way he danced that, that would still be consistent with, with his persona? Very, very precise movements. Uh -oh. Walang yeah. extra movements. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Precise. Mm -hmm. Not precise. elaborate, just uh -oh. the right step. Just the right moves. Yeah, goes very cool. To, goes back mm -hmm. to what you were saying, uh, boots. Mm -mm. You know, uh, personal qualities, right? Yeah. Even dancing. I mean, the, 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 its simplicity, its directness, mm -hmm. it's the integrity of everything. The honesty in everything. Uh -oh. In his aesthetic. Pare pare was the same. Okay, it's a dancing. Ayan na si Ambet. Ambet na wala uh -oh. kayo. There's, a, yeah, there's a, somehow a consistency. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Uh, yeah. And actually a, a humility too. Mm -hmm. A humility about Almost. Not being too flashy or anything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but we were talking about um, yung distinct attributes, uh, qualities, no, ni Mr. Luce, and we started talking about his dancing. Um, <laughs> obviously, you know, what lang restraint, di ba? Oh, wala. <laughs> Oy, restra no, restraint. Exacto lang ang movements. Exacto, exacto pa rin. Well, no. Um... <laughs> Um, okay, the other question that I posed was, um, how has Mr. Luce influenced your professional practice, values, or work ethic that he has imbibed, that you imbibed from him? Um, yeah, any, any thoughts on that? Um, maybe Tina, ikaw ang mauna. You know, Mr. Luce was the first one who believed in me. Mm. Amazing. So the only thing was, I hope I did not disappoint. I'm sure you didn't. Super favorite ka ni Mr. Lou. Oh, oh, ikaw talaga. Oo oh, naman. <laughs> Ewan ko kung bakit. Mo, pero... Nabili mo ng tamal, nabili mo ng tamales. <laughs> oh, you were talking about that yun, yesterday. Uh, yun lang ang gusto niya, tamales. Oh my God. Oh. <laughs> And not everybody makes tamales. Oh, geez, it's hard to find, especially during the pandemic. Is it hard the to sweet find. one or you the salty one? No, 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 no. It's the one with uh, with chicken, oh. egg, um, egg. Yeah. Pero, yes, the, the salaw. The, the salado, the salaw, salaw, a salted one. So mm, salted. when I found out that he hanap hanap niya pang merienda, oh, oh my God, talaga naman. You have to rock the world and look for it. Because that's what he wanted. I mean, you can send him fruits, whatever, and or or even beef, pero tamales, tamales. Yeah, yeah. Yung type on yeah. talaga. O parang ang tamales. For tamales tuloy. You what he like? Yeah. No. No. And then uh, th th that's what that's what he looked for. Tinatanong niya yung merienda. Ang ang budget niya is one a day. Yeah. So and I said, okay. Give him, give him like a whole, you know, batch of. Wag naman, wag naman every day, because uh -oh. it's not also good. So kind of matatlo, ganon para is space nila, and then they can mm -hmm. freeze it naman. Eh. So that's it. What about you? That's what Mister Luce for me. Um, any um, parang has Mister Luce influenced you, um, in your professional work? Uh, I I'm sure your father did, no, but um. No, seeing how they collaborated closely. Are there any? Um, I, I, think it, I think it's sucks. hand in glove, boots. Mm -hmm. uh, sort of uh, whatever my father's approach to architecture was. In other words, sort of uh, mm -hmm. that simplicity, that sort mm -hmm. of uh, primordial thing of form, um, sort of uh, restraint. Uh, it's all a carryover. It is actually weirdly almost one and the same thing. Mm -hmm. Um, even sort of uh, within our office today, when we look at sort of our interiors and sort of uh, what you do for your for design for interiors, um, what do you put in a building? What do you recommend to a client? Mm -hmm. um, they are all along that line. Mm -hmm. uh, it remains, our tutor remains a peg. Mm -mm. Remains yeah. a peg for us to this day, yeah. uh, all the way through. Mm -hmm. For everyone. For everyone. Mm -hmm. For everyone. Malu ikaw, any um anything you'd like to share in that respect? I think my experience with Mr. Luce shows me how great one can be and yet so humble that he 
he was excited to work on this restaurant project when he could have been doing, you know, he was already doing greater things, but he gave so much attention and he gave his whole heart into it. And you could see it in the works. He didn't find it like a small time project mm -hmm. or, you know, but he, he, he knew how important it was to me and to Tina and to Ramon. And so mm -hmm. he gave his all to it. So it teaches us no, no matter how, you know, the great ones, the great people show their greatness in this way. Mm -hmm. So it shows us how to be. So, so going back to say humility no? and, and professionalism. Yeah. He didn't find it badoy, you know, or, oh. or corny. Yeah. No, he, he was, okay, let's do it, you know. And the mere fact that we have been Yeah, that's it. But <laughs> you know, your favorite ka daw, eh. so, Oh yeah, I know, but it, yeah. he gave me so much work. He gave me so much work, and I, I as a government employee uh -huh. for Design Center, I was working on weekends. Unbelievable! I was alone. Teacher's pet. <laughs> oh, you know, Tina, going back to the story that you told us, sort of backstage, so to speak. Mm -hmm. It's because you you took an interest in making sources. It's bush jackets from the Suno. Ah, yeah. Bush jacket, uh, yeah, no. That's why you know, Andy amazing. mentioned the bush jacket. And the, the bush jacket. Balik tayo sa bush jacket. <laughs> when we would have meetings in design center, so you sit on a table and he's there and everyone's just staring at him. And most of them were scared. I don't know why, but they were scared. So you just stare and you stare and then you see, oops, a bush jacket may butas dito, may butas dyan. Uh -huh. From cigarette burns. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Why did he get rid of it? No, because if it's like that, it's going to get rid of it. Oh, it's going to get rid of it. It's going to get rid of it. Two cigarettes going on at the same time. Mm. All the and you, time. And you, you can't tell him, Sir, uh -oh. yung ashes. you can't. You can't. Just that, it's just like that. So, when I had enough money, that's when I decided, Miss, Miss, I, told, I asked Mrs. Luz, I said, Mrs. Luz, pahiram po ng bush jacket, pagagawa po ako para kay Mr. Luz. Oh my God, I had, I had several made gray, black, and kacha mm -hmm. for him. And napalitan na ang bush jacket. Wala bush nang jacket. butas. Wala na. <laughs> um, and his Amazing. Mom, his mom can feel his, you know, um, when did he decide to... To quit smoking. Maybe we 80, 80 years old. So that miracle happened and I couldn't believe it. No, I to, couldn't believe. Yeah, 80. I couldn't believe he stopped smoking. Uh, one, one day, I said, oh, but one day, cigarillo. <laughs> cold turkey. Mm -hmm. Cold turkey. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, oh, time check can... now. Oh, time check now. Oh, so, siguro just uh, to close. Over time na tayo. Oh, oh. Um, so just to close, um, oh, oh, what are your half, last, seven, ano, last um, uh, what would you consider to be his most important contribution to Philippine art and culture? Siguro just one, one give, give one thing that you could cite. Or, or, marami. Marami. Alam ko marami. Pero Mahirap ka naman yan. Apat naman kayo eh. Ganun eh. <laughs> I'm just. Going, I'm going to read the list. Okay. Oh, yeah. Sige, Sige. Andy. So you have a list. Oh yeah. No. No big. You list. made the list. But 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 I, I had four. I mm -hmm. had four. Um, number one, I think, uh, somehow the introduction and the belief, in the power of abstraction, to be read on many levels. Mm -hmm. right? Great art being having the the unique ability to be perceived and read on many levels by many different people in many different ways. Somehow, um, I think he was a main exponent of that. Of the art Second, I think, is the value of restraint. Mm. Can't say it any more yeah. than that. Yeah. Because I mean, as a society, I think we are very colorful and sort of over the top people. Uh, he absolutely showed how there was not only value, there was power mm -hmm. and restraint and length in restraint. 
things Very become true. Time, things become timeless when you restrain your. Yeah. Uh, number three is that sort of a, the idea of having trust in the quality, integrity, and the universality of art itself. Trusting the the essence of of what he was doing and sticking to it. Not kind of you know, not completely selling out or whatever, sticking to the idea, mm. twisting on it, and it endures because of that, right? Mm. Uh, without the hype. And last, the fourth, I think is to really, really uh, authentically a deep and wide influence, uh, not only on visual and representative art, but on general design sensibility and the human. Mm. I think when you look at sort of what's being produced today by by the designers out there, there's almost something you will always be able to sort of point out um, something that was somehow derived or pulled away uh, from what Arturo did during his lifetime, not just from the art, but from his design. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Totally right. agree. Totally yeah. agree. Totally agree. And I, I do believe also he opened our eyes, at least in the industry level for for the industry of design, he opened our eyes to 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 appreciating what we have by bringing uh, bringing the foreigners in and telling us mm. telling us that we are good and we are great mm -hmm. and that we have to develop what we have mm. and that's what he did and 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 now our exports sana take off properly despite China. I mean, mm. you know, there's yeah. value in design. Walang, walang insecurity, no? Wala. Basta yung ginawa niya, yun na yun. Exactly. And I guess yung, yung eh. brain, role brain. of design center, no? Um, how he started, uh, his vision for design center. Um, Amazing. So ahead of his time. No? Yes, in, yes, in, yes, yes. Um, supporting our local, um, the, the local industry. Kasi naalala ko noon, parang um, meron sila, merong off government office yung nasida ba yon national uh, cottage that, industry that promotes cottage ano, industry diba? pero design center really um raised it the, took the off bar, it no? took off oh. it yet yeah, it raised the bar yeah. that's true that's mm -hmm. true so i hope um which i think hopefully it still continues now no? it, it's sure. continuing it's uh -oh. continuing okay so any last words from from the other uh, from Malu, Ambert, and Tina before we close. Tina, Andy put it very well. Oh, yeah. so. I know. <laughs> Sige. So, thank and, you very yeah. much. Uh, yes, yes, Tina. Salamat to Mr. Luz. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Uh, yung, ano, you mentioned kanina yung, yung show, yung exhibit, yung tribute niya sa kanya. Um, ano yung title? Mabuhay ka manong. Mabuhay ka manong. Oo, Akala by Design ko siya Center. Si manong. Siya ba si well, Manong? Manong din Manong siya. Manong, Manong din siya. But, but he, he Manong, uses but he, it. Yes, he uses it to, 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 compliment, to, ano, to compliment Manong or Mrs. Galing, or Miss. No? Yeah. So yun, mabuhay ka Manong. Para kay Manong. Everyone, para kay Manong. So para thank you, Manong. Andy, uh, Malu, Nina, and Ambet. Um, maybe for now, can we request uh, Tricky, um, Lisa, and Bindin? Um, to turn on their videos for um, a screenshot. Uh, this is the last live. Um, Ayan, tricky. Ayan. Lisa, she's Sorry, asleep. Um, marami, Wake up. <laughs> marami pang questions na hindi na na. Uh, <laughs> Thank comments. you very much. Got you. Thank you so much. It was wonderful to end the art fair with you guys. And what a wonderful talk. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Luz, who was such a presence in the art fair. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Um, it's been a real privilege for us in the audience to see all your personal perspectives on Mr. Luz. That's not the usual way that um, we tend to look at um, artists. So it's been a real privilege uh, for us. I think this is one for the archives that we'll be referring mm -hmm. to in the future. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome. Just yeah. the last note, um, Lisa oh. Lorenzo said that the Urdaneta Village logo was designed by Mr. Luz. Uh, yeah. So, wow. Uh, yung mga, I'm sure marami pang ganyan na ano, hindi, mm -hmm. um, kailang i-research. So are we good um, for the screenshot before we...
Lisa gives his her final end. Okay, okay yes, March. let's have a screenshot for documentation. Um, Thank you. Cecile? Yes, okay. Ready? Three, two, one. One more. Three, two, one. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 For the attendees, um, just in case you don't didn't notice, we do have some Arturo Luz behind our in our background. Um, Malu, Tina, and Andy have actual works behind their background. Mine is a virtual background from the Ateneo Art Gallery collection. So, thank you from Ateneo Art Gallery for letting us participate, allowing us to participate in this in this conversation. So, Lisa. Yes, thank you very much to today's speakers. Uh, this ends our um, the live events on the Art Fair website. Thank you so much to our audience for participating. Um, thank you, Boots, and your team from Ateneo Art Gallery for assisting us with this session. As usual, we'd like to thank our education partners. Uh, those are um, the Ateneo Art Gallery, Museum Foundation of the Philippines, and Art Review, yeah. The website is still available, of course, but the live talks will be transferred to our YouTube channel, Art Fair Philippines, so please visit it. And um, uh, most of the talks, about 90% of them, have been uploaded um, to that site. So thank you, everyone. It's been a real um, wonderful ending to the Art Fair run this year. And thank you for making it happen. Goodbye. Thank you, everyone.